What's up everybody, my name is Cap, and I wanted to talk to you about two news pieces they released recently about Call of Duty Ghost. The first one is dedicated servers, the thing people have been fighting for since Call of Duty 4 came out basically. Now I'm talking about console, not PC. And all of this I'm talking about console because PCs pretty much always had dedicated servers. Now I know there's a few instances where there wasn't, so I'm not trying to debate that. But... They recently released an information that uh, the Xbox One version of Call of Duty Ghost will have dedicated servers using the Microsoft Cloud technology. Now what does that mean? Well they have been not really the most clarifying on what that means. Now it doesn't mean, it doesn't uh, say for sure yet whether or not it's going to be dedicated servers provided by Infinity Ward that handle hosting and matchmaking and all that other stuff in the cloud. Or if it's going to be sort of like a Battlefield sort of situation where they have cloud servers available that players can rent and host themselves. Either way, it's not a bad thing. I mean, with the dedicated servers going there, it just means that the uh, host selection is going to be a lot less a big part of the game. Meaning that you're not going to have as many dropped lobbies, you'll have better connections overall. So however they implement this, I see it as being a plus for the game, and I really think it's a good idea they finally did this. Now, I don't know for sure, they haven't said anything about PlayStation 4 version of it yet, because I don't know if the PSN has a cloud-based service going on there for them to be able to do that. There's nothing been released yet. So what that means for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, though, is that it's going to be standard P2P connections. There is no cloud service for those two things. This is just for next-gen technology here, so... That is what we have for dedicated servers. So I'm hoping that it's a big, a big change here. You know, I'm planning on buying it on PC myself because uh, I'm not getting one of the next gen consoles, at least not at launch anyway. So it doesn't really affect me as much. But I know there's a lot of people out there that have been fighting for dedicated servers, including myself, for many, many years. So it's good that they finally started listening and there's finally an option to it. Now, I know this is the much cheaper route than if they just implemented a few data centers around the world themselves, because, you know, that is one hell of an undertaking as far as financial goes. But at least we have the option now, so I'm hoping it's something really good. The second piece of news they gave us recently is uh, letting us know that Call of Duty Ghost is no longer going to have built-in theater mode. Now, this could be a good thing, and here's why. Um, since Black Ops 1, when theater mode was first introduced, people have been clamoring that theater mode is the cause for a lot of the connection issues. And for instance, let me explain just how it worked in the previous games. In Black Ops 1, the host recorded everything for theater. It had to keep track of a lot of information there, because it kept track of all the game state, kept track of all of the player's first-person views and their third-person views, which is why you could cycle through all those there. And it was designed to turn off if the host ever migrated, lost its connection, or if the match was just going on too long, like in Ground War, which a lot of people saw happen all the time. So the host was handling absolutely everything for everybody. And on top of having to handle the game state and, you know, connectivity and quote-unquote lag compensation all that, so... A lot of people saw that as the first reason why we started having connection issues. Now, in Black Ops 1, going from Modern Warfare 2 to Black Ops 1, there was more changed in the game than just changing theater, and just adding theater. They also changed how host selection was done, how matchmaking was done, uh, level balancing the players out so that it wasn't host advantage anymore. That was, there was a lot changed in that game, so it wasn't just theater that was causing all the problems, but... You know, Vaughn even admitted at one point that theater may have been having some adverse effects on some things and advised people they could turn it off. Now, when it came to Modern Warfare 3, the players themselves saved the theater file on the local drives, but they had to get the information from the host, which means they could only get single updates from the host, which is why you only got first-person views from everybody, and you couldn't get third-person, um, just because that was all the information you could get from the host. Once again, they thought that maybe this was too much of a load on the actual host itself, and so that's why Infinity Ward and Modern Warfare 3 came out, you know, started having all the lag compensation problems. They started advising people, try turning theater off and see if that actually manages, has anything. But, you know, the problem is that even if you turned yours off, everybody else was, was still on, so it was still capturing your data. So even if you weren't saving it to your hard drive, you were still getting your data captured. Black Ops 2 changed it up again a little bit so that everybody was recording their own, but everybody was recording it just on their local console for first and third person views. Personally, I saw better connections in Black Ops 2 than I ever saw in Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 1. Even to this day, there's still better connections, but I know that's kind of a, 
you ask a thousand people, you get a thousand different responses on that one there. So, with the exclusion of theater mode in Call of Duty Ghosts, one of the biggest things we're losing is that we're going to miss out on being able to see some of the really cool cinematics that we have from these people. There are some really creative people on YouTube that put together some awesome you know, uh, cinematic style experiences, some Michael Bay style productions and flyovers and different camera views and you know I've even used it a lot in, in some of my videos and so that aspect of it I'm going to miss and of course being able to not have to worry about having your PVR running all the time you didn't have to worry about whether or not you had pressed record before a match was playing you could just go to theater and record it that way so it made you know made doing YouTube a lot easier when you're doing Call of Duty videos so what that also means is that any and all Call of Duty videos we see and, and Ghost for uh, gameplays and stuff is all going to be the old style gameplays prior to Black Ops 1. No more cool cinematics and flyovers and slow motion sort of things because it's all going to be just the first person of the person you're playing for. Now the reason they did all that is because the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 both have built in PVR capabilities so that it records the gameplay for you. Now I haven't heard but it, exactly, but I've, I did hear that there's some limitations as to like how long it'll record, and of course what it'll actually record. Because if it's just basic PVR, then all it's doing is recording your gameplay as it's happening. So it's still not gonna get very many cinematics. But me personally, if it means that there's a chance this could cause some way better connections and way better playing in the game, I'm out for it. Get rid of theater. It's cool with me. So recap. Dedicated servers in the cloud on Xbox One and removal of theater entirely throughout the game system there. I think we could see some better connections Call of Duty Ghosts. Of course, we won't know until the game actually comes out and we have a chance to play it. But these are just my thoughts. You know, what do you guys think? Do you have any opinions on this? Um, I'd be glad to hear them. You know, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You guys have a good one, and I will talk to you later.